perfect. Yeah, okay. you're doing great. great. Uh, so I'm just going to wait for that notification to come up. The recording, awesome. Hello, Mountain Lions Nation, and welcome back to Lionsverse, a weekly podcast taking you inside the athletic department, giving you an opportunity to get to know some of your coaches as well as some of your fellow student athletes. I'm your host, Holly Stevenson, and with me today, I have the head coach for women's golf again, uh, Todd Laxon. Uh, coach, thank you again so much for being here. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know we talked last semester about um, kind of fall and everything, and you guys have had a great spring season getting ready to go into the RMAC championship this uh, coming, the, or excuse me, the following week. Um, was there a different approach from fall to spring that you guys took in order to get to the championships this year? You know, I, I think uh, we've got young. Um, we've got two freshmen in the starting lineup. Um, part of that is due to a uh, an injury, but uh, mm -hmm. really, it's just just getting these kids acclimated and playing. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we've had a tough time in Colorado and spring yeah. specifically with weather this spring. So um, it's more maybe looking back, we might have done things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. um, but but we are where we are, and and uh, it's it's gonna work out just fine we just got uh back from basically putting 2,000 miles on a van yeah uh, last week uh down in phoenix and tucson so played six mm -hmm. straight days so uh the team that's that played those six straight days is going back uh down for the armac conference championship and we went and saw the golf course so we're 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 gonna be as ready as we can be with that with uh with our prep um you know based on that golf and then yeah. obviously what we're putting in this week so Right, right. Um, so speaking on the weather then, because uh, since the sport is basically all outside, how do you adjust with the weather? Do you just kind of try to play through it um, or what? what's the backup plan for all of that training? There are uh, you, there's, there's a few different ways we have to tackle that. I mean, you know, yeah. first and foremost, uh, when we played in Pueblo a couple of weeks ago, we played 36 in kind of a miserable windy day yeah. uh, but but the you know it's it's weather so it's completely unpredictable you uh you know at the golf course you prepare for three seasons every day so potentially uh, you know this time of year it's you were in spring so it's maybe winter spring and summer and you yep. may get all three of them in nine holes right so yeah exactly. um it really it's the same theme that we've we've kind of dealt with with pandemic speaking expect change expect things to be different expect things to not be the way you plan yeah. Um, so really just that mantra and that mindset has kept everybody pretty positive um, in reality. And, you know, windy and cold days are going to happen, but we also know that 90 degree days are going to happen in Arizona. So so we put in the work on the windy, cold days so that we can benefit from the from the warm, warm, great conditions we get to also. Yeah. Does that uh, make it harder to adjust when you're training kind of all week in this cold, windy weather and then you go drastically into basically the totally opposite type of weather is that it, hard for athletes to adjust to you know i think it's it's kind of like training with weight boots on really like okay. you're you're yeah. running around kind of trudging in in lots of uh you know lots of clothes lots of layers uh -huh. and things like that and all of a sudden they're all gone so right. you feel your golf swing is pretty free um mm -hmm. and it really is it's a little euphoric when you get to green grass and you get to warm weather so um I think really what we have to do is we have to kind of calm ourselves a little bit like oh my gosh don't get too overexcited that we're we're not in 40 degree weather right right so, right yeah. okay it makes a lot of sense yeah. yeah um and you mentioned earlier you guys have a pretty young team uh looking at your roster so um how has it been with the new group of girls and i know last semester you mentioned how regina um, was missing the fall season but she's going to be back for the spring so yep. um has she kind of taken on more of a leadership role being one of one of the um well she's a graduate student so one of the older kids on the on the on the team the old lady on the team as we call <laughs> yeah. time. yeah so um no she has been uh she she's been a great uh, she's been a great addition in the spring. You know, having this the fall, my concern was that with her working in her internship uh, in Durango, she just wouldn't have time to practice and prepare. Uh, mm -hmm. But she really came in uh, ready to go and stepped right up into the middle of the lineup. Uh, you know, we were in Texas uh, early in March, mm 
-hmm. and we're playing as a team right now in a lot of in a lot of instances so the entire team is playing as a group together so very right. different dynamic uh than we have typically in kind of a typical tournament format but um mm -hmm. it was a great uh, opportunity for her to step right back in and and honestly after she hit that first tee shot on that first day in texas uh, yeah. We both kind of let go a big sigh, and I was like, you know, I'm I'm really proud of her. I'm really proud that she she's just back and and working hard and and really does a nice job of setting an example and kind of bringing the team along. Maybe uh, you know somewhat leadership, but more about lead by example and her behavior on the golf course, which I think is really important for our younger players to see. Right, absolutely. And so how have you seen or how um, has her role um, on the team kind of evolved over her her time here at UCCS? Um, or what specifically have you had her work um, on her game that you feel like has been like a, a great improvement for for her brain game? Brain yeah. game, 100 percent. Yeah, absolutely. We you know, we bring in talented players. There's there's no doubt yeah. that the golf swings and the sequence of the golf swings that we're looking at. Um, you know, I have some I have some things that I want to see, uh, but mm -hmm. I don't think that high school in, you know, in broad terms, high schools don't prepare you uh, for that part of a golf swing. And I say it over and over uh, that that I've brought in the talent on the, you know, the physical talent. But now we're working on the mental talent. So uh, mm -hmm. I think. I think, unfortunately, we still, it's like any other practice. If you don't yeah. practice that part of or aspect of your game, you don't deploy it very well. So right. um, I know that we talk, um, we all talk a lot about, oh, my gosh, you know, we kind of lament the idea that uh, how come I know what I should be doing and I don't do it. But, you know, we could we could say that physically, too, right? We could, oh, we could be prepared physically and not actually deploy our, our physical talents at that time. Yeah. So um, it's it's just something that we have to continually practice, just like putting, just like chipping, just like full swing. All of those things need practice. And the more you practice them, the more you're comfortable pulling them out when you need them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Totally agree with that. And so, um, and that obviously goes for all of the freshmen coming in too. Um, and so as you guys prepare for Arizona um, and the RMAC cha championships, and I know you touched base on this a little bit earlier, um, how, what, how is the approach any different than any other matchup that you guys are going into? No, not at all. No. Not at all. It's just it's one more round, right? So we're playing typically in in our tournaments. Uh, you know, unusually we'll play thirty six the first day and then eighteen the second day. Um, right. Guys always typically do that. Division one, division two, mm -hmm. division two. Uh, very often our tournaments are just thirty six holes, so it's eighteen each day. Right. Um, so the nice part is we get to kind of reorganize after that first 18. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're playing 36 on one day, you don't necessarily get to reorganize and re-strategize after that first 18 because there right. isn't time. You don't stop. You just keep going. So, right. um, you know, unlike a basketball team, unlike a football team or a soccer team, um, if somebody's if somebody's struggling, you can't pull them. Right. You can't pull right. them on the bench. You can't give them some coaching, give them some direction. Yep. Um, you have to do that on the fly on the golf course. And mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, you've got five hours to distract yourself from beating yourself up about your round of golf. Right. So For there's sure. a lot of different techniques that we have to deal with. Um, so the 18 holes allows us to really assess uh, what happened, what we need to change, uh, if anything. You know, sometimes right. sometimes you hit the ball great and you just don't score that well. So um, mm -hmm. that's hard to redirect. I don't want to say, man, you just absolutely, you know, you, you didn't miss a fairway. You didn't miss a green. We just didn't putt well or we didn't, you know, we, ball didn't ball didn't roll in the hole. And and um, that's one of those things that is a is a shot by shot reassessment for for the player is mm -hmm. that they can hit a good putt that doesn't go in. Right. I mean, uh, we we call fair the first four letter F word in our in our group because we play an outdoor game. It is not intended to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, so we work really hard on on really staying very neutral in reaction, yeah. uh, no matter the good or the bad. So, um, okay. you know, 54 holes is going to be a little bit different. We we've, we've played 54 holes a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't played it over three days. It's usually 36 and 18. So yeah. uh, it'll be, I think they'll actually feel like, wow, I've got a lot of energy yeah. and we can, we can really give everything to each 18 holes. That's great. And that's a great approach <clears throat> to it too. Um, so 
touching base back on the freshmen again, um, I want to talk a little bit about what your recruiting process looks like um, because you did have so many new uh, talent come in. So what is the entire process look like and kind of what do you look for for in each athlete? OK, so, you know, there are some metrics that, um, you know, with, with the and I, I, I'm going to date myself here, but with the onset of all of the email and all of the recruiting services that are out there, sure. I probably get you know, probably 10 emails, uh, at least 25 emails a week, you know, pro probably five to maybe even 10 per day um, right. talking about skills of, of kids all over the country and all over the world, really. So right. um, a, a lot of this becomes uh, kind of a tournament scoring average. And unfortunately, there haven't been a lot of golf tournaments. You know, there have been seasons that have been canceled. Like these these kids are struggling just to find competition. So right, uh, right now I, I feel... I feel the most for this 2021 class. Now, our, our 2021 class coming in, uh, two great kids. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got one kid coming in from Texas. We've got one coming in from Denver. So uh, one local, one, you know, um, out of stater. Um, but to back up, kind of the same thing happened for my 2020 class. You know, unfortunately, um, the kids that didn't have a 2020 spring season, they really struggled to find somewhere to play golf because they just didn't give that have that senior senior season. They didn't have their right. state championship to to post scores to. Mm -hmm. So so a lot of people were taking it kind of on blind assumption that, oh, yeah, we played good as a junior or played good in a, in a varying role and then really didn't play a ton of competitive golf. So right. um, the metrics are part of it. Uh, you know, kids come to golf after they play other sports oftentimes. So I'll, I'll have soccer players or I'll have softball players or, or, you know, just other, other play, uh, you know, other team sport players that come to golf mm -hmm. for a myriad of reasons. But um, I, I think the most important part of what we do is we have to realize that we are, it's such a funky team sport. Golf yeah. is a team sport, but it's also a very individual sport. Super individual. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I think we've talked about that before, but yeah. um, the, the hard part about that is how you, you know, how how golf is played both in the team and the individual aspect. Like for the yeah. team, you know, I have to make a little bit different decision. Like I, I have to, I can't take the same risk I might if it's just my own score that I'm dealing with. Um, right. I have to kind of minimize that damage. And sure, you'd want to do that individually, but mm -hmm. overall, you know, one or two shots can decide uh, the fate of the team as far as the standing is concerned. So um, mm -hmm. we have to really kind of kind of look at that specifically, especially as we draw to the end of a round. We tend mm -hmm. to give up shots at the end of a round. And we're not we're not alone. I mean, that's not right. Yeah. Metric that's just, you know, um, ours. That's that's everybody. We get a little mental fatigue and and uh, a little off your game and and not paying attention to hydrating or or, or you know, eating something and making sure you've got all your capacity there. Um, yeah. So it's just one of those things that that we have to make sure as a coach and as a, as players, if you're playing with each other, as you're picking each other up, like, hey, all right, we got three holes left. Let's you know, mm -hmm. let's let's lock in here, so um, right. so that we don't kind of bleed shots away at the end of a round. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I totally agree with that. So when you get all of these emails and videos in of recruits, do you look for a certain handicap or what what in particular will get athletes on your radar? You know, I think I think a lot of it is is um, solid fundamentals golf swing wise. Um, yeah. You know, there, it's not a golf swing that we have a, uh, a tremendous amount of work to do. And they may they may use it very well. They may play a golf swing that's a little unorthodox very well. Mm -hmm. But in reality, they have to know how that golf swing works. Right. This is a right. high performance machine that they have to have a very good understanding of what makes it tick, mm -hmm. um, because once they get to me, uh, we're, we're going to work on that stuff, but that's going to be that's going to be kind of in the in the distance. We're not going to work on that as specifically. We're going to work a lot more on short game, uh, golf course uh, management, those kind of things. So I need to see a golf swing that repeats. I need to see a golf swing that really has a pretty small window of, of miss. So typically what we talk about is a one way miss. So on a golf course, if I, if I hit a lot of balls that maybe are pretty straight or just move a little bit one way, but not two ways. So I don't miss a little bit right and a little bit left. So mm -hmm. I have a way that I can approach a golf course. Um, they have to be good chippers and putters, or they're going to be good chippers and putters by the time we're done. Um, right. Typically, typically girls are typically girls yeah. have um, a little bit better, um, a little bit better skill around short game because they don't hit it as far as the guys. 
and they miss greens a little bit more, so they're chipping a little bit more. So um, just just solid fundamentals, uh, a good um, you know a good kind of balanced approach. Um, I, I like that. I like kids that are that are connected with golf coaches. I like kids that are connected with somebody that's watching their golf swing and and keeping them working. Um, yeah. And, and that continues through college. Like, I, I don't yeah. want them to, you know, sever their, their relationship with a golf coach that knows their golf swing way better than I do at this point. Right. So um, it's more of a relationship, kind of the kind of the trilogy, the kind of the trinity there. Like, I, I yeah. it needs to be yeah. me, the player and their golf coach um, right. helping them excel. Right. Helping them yeah. improve. Um, and I'm going to work on a lot of the non kind of the non-technical aspect or, uh, you know, initially because they're still yeah. working with, with their cues from their golf coach um, yeah. until they trust me a little bit more. And then, and then I'll step in and, and work, work a little bit more specifically. But, you know, the, the, if we talk about Emily and we talk about, um, we talk about Sam specifically and even Cheryl this fall, Cheryl opted out of the spring. Um, yeah. But, you know, fundamentally super sound, super sound players. Um, Emily's got a, a golf swing that's very rhythmic. Um, Sam is tall and so she creates a lot of leverage. Um, so, and then, and then Cheryl is just, uh, I think she grew up in kind of a, kind of a Northern Texas, Oklahoma area. So she plays the ball a little bit lower and just, just hits it really straight and really far. Um, so, you know, those kind of things, just, just using their games, uh, here in Colorado and shoot, we don't play that much in Colorado, right? (laughs) We're, we spend our time playing everywhere else but uh i know one of our our incoming students uh her parents asked well should should she come in and play in colorado all summer i said no we don't play in colorado that much we practice in colorado so um so it's um it's you know i I think students are are the most important piece of this too like uh, you know we have to have a good gpa we're gone for four days at a time at minimum like we fly out we have a practice round we play two or three rounds of golf and then we come home so it's been easier this year with all of the hybrid classes and and everybody everybody's already there so so we can we can do uh we can practice and behave differently uh when we're out on the on the at the at the tournament sites because the, they already are getting their classes uh, uh, virtually anyway, so that's helpful um, to us a little selfishly. I know that I know sure, the kids yeah. don't like it as much, right? I know that being in class is important for them, um, and and I know that too. I I liked I liked being in class, so yeah. Uh, so from that aspect, I'm I'm hoping they get back to that soon. But right. our kids are our kids are ready to go for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say, but a silver lining for every rain cloud, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's awesome. I really appreciate that and in, the in-depth look of what the whole recruiting looks like um, and what you look for at each individual athlete. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know we're uh, coming across uh, 20 minutes soonish here. Um, so I'll just ask you one final question before I let you go. I like to ask all of the athletes and coaches this this semester. Um, do you have like a, a meet day routine or um, so, or or any sort of routine? And what does that look like if you do? So we, um, it depends on what, what our, what our start time is. So if we go okay. in tea times, um, yep. and so that, you know, the girls are going off individually in times, um, yep. we, we have a little bit different approach. If we have a shotgun terminal where everybody starts at the same time, uh, mm-hmm. we pick a time before that, that we want to, we want to show up at the practice facility. So, um, okay. what I don't want them to do is I don't want them to, uh over train i don't want them to to you know oh, just set up on the on the driving range and and start creating bad swings and bad habits and bad thoughts so yeah. so we do have a specific approach on how we warm up okay uh, you know basically warming up for golf is is warming up muscles to swing the club you don't mm-hmm. swing the club to warm up you warm up to swing the club right so Absolutely. so we're not really that specific on direction we're not really that specific on anything but getting stuff going and then they get to pick one thing on the range that they're going to work on. So if they, because everybody loves a mechanical thing, every, they, they, yeah, they know so that they're comfortable with that. So, so mm-hmm. I let them pick one mechanical aspect that they're going to work on. And mm-hmm. then they get to hit 10 to 15 balls dedicated to that. Once they're done with that, they can hit a few drives and they're done with that. Right. So I don't exactly. care where in their process we do that, but we basically, I give them about an hour. I don't want them to have too much more time than that. Um, you know, Dakota, for instance, Dakota's going to hit four or five golf balls to warm up full swing. And that's it. And that's okay with me. She's going to spend a lot more time putting and chipping. That's where she feels like she warms up better. So 
I'm going to give them the a lot of time and then they have a lot of kind of freedom and how they're going to they're going to use that time. Uh, we spend time together uh, before we go out. Uh, mm -hmm. We spend time together kind of in our little our little huddle and we write on our wrists. We have I have a thousand different Sharpie colors and we write some things on our wrists. So some of it is a it's kind of a sensory uh, thing that we need to remember something. So it's like last week at Ventana Canyon, everybody had a mountain on their wrist because the mountains were really important as to how the putts broke. So we can remember that I need to know where the mountain is so I know where the putts are breaking. Um, right. Some of them will work on something that they were talking about technically. So if somebody is looking at, um, you know, if they're trying to think of something for their golf swing, they're going to write that on their wrist. So it's a it's just a single thing or a short phrase, right? Yeah. Um, Julia Eaton will write, she'll write little letters on there. Like you need to calm down. Taylor Swift is her girl. So she throws, you need to calm down on there because she gets a little bit fired right. up, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll put stop signs on our wrist so that we stop bad behavior. We stop kind of that negative, negative self-talk. We'll do things like that. Um, and then in the last couple of weeks, since we've had JJ out with, uh, with an injury, JJ has been on our wrist. So we're making yeah. sure that we're, we're thinking about her as we're out there playing too. So, um, those kind of things. And we just, we just meet and, uh, last parting wishes and good luck to everybody. And we roll, but that's that we try to encompass all that in an hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's yeah. a great routine and yeah. it's clearly working for you guys. Um, so I just want to thank you again for sitting down with me. I know you're super busy with uh, prepping for Arizona. So we wish you the best of luck at the RMAC championship. Thank you very um, much. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Mount Lions, this has been Lionsverse. Join me back for next week for another episode. And until then, enjoy the rest of your week.